This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, on this video, we're going to do the following two problems. We're going to find the equation for the inverse function, and then we're going to verify that our equation is correct by computing f of f inverse of x and f inverse of f of x and make sure that we get x for both here. This needs an extra parenthesis. Okay. The first one was f of x equals two-thirds x plus eight. All right, so step one is we want to write f at, at, um, using y for f of x. So y equals two-thirds x plus eight. And now we want to write the inverse function by switching the x and y coordinates. So in other words, we're just going to put x where y is and y where x is. Now, I'm going to just think of this right-hand side. I'm just going to put it on the left-hand side of the equation. So when I rewrite this, I'm just going to write that not 2 thirds x, but I'm going to switch and write that as 2 thirds y plus 8 equals, and over here instead of y, I'm going to put x. All right, so I just put the right-hand side on of the equation on the left-hand side and vice versa. And the reason I did that is because then I would have y on the left-hand side of my equation. And a lot of people like to solve when the variable they're solving for is on the left side. Now, there's different steps you could take for your second step. You could either subtract 8 from both sides, or you could multiply everything by 3 to get rid of the fractions. That's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So that means 2 thirds y equals x minus 8. And now, same thing. We can multiply by 3 to get rid of fractions, or we could multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 2 thirds and solve for y all in one step. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply everything by 2 thirds on both sides of the equation. So 2 thirds, oops, I did that wrong. I meant to say 3 halves. Right? All right, so 3 halves times 2 thirds, that's just going to give you y. And then we have 3 halves times x minus 8. Now, this is actually okay. You can write this in different ways. You can distribute the 3 halves to write 3 halves x minus, now, 3 halves times 8. The 2 will go into that 8, and you're going to get a 12. So y equals 3 halves, parentheses, x minus 8. y equals 3 halves, x minus 12. That's really the same thing. And somebody else might even write it a different way. They might take this and multiply the 3 through the x minus 8. Right, because that's 3 over 2. And write it as 3x minus 24 over 2. So those are like three different ways you might solve for y. Um, usually you wouldn't leave the x minus 8 in parentheses, but it really is correct, just isn't as simplified. So now we can write our inverse function. Once you solve for y, f, f inverse of x, either write it 3x minus 24 over 2, or 3 halves x minus 12. I'm going to go ahead and just write 3 halves x minus 12, but I just want you to know that's not the only way you can do it. Now we want to verify this. So we want to see if f of f inverse of x equals x, and f inverse of f of x equals x. All right, so here are our two functions. We These are supposed to be inverses, so when I do f of f inverse of x, I should get x, so let's do it. f of, now f inverse of x, look over here, is 3 halves x minus 12. And now we're going to plug this in for x into this function for f. So we have 2 thirds of x, and in this case, that's what's in parentheses, 3 halves x minus 12. So that's 2 thirds x, and also we have to go plus 8. So I do the distributive property here. So 
we have 2 thirds times 3 halves x, that's going to be x, minus 2 thirds times 12. All right, so the 3 goes into the 12, 4 times 2, that's going to give you 8. Or you could think of that as 24 thirds, which is also 8, plus 8. And so I do equal, get this to equal to x. So these are inverses of each other. But let's do it the other way, since that, those were the directions. Let's also do f inverse of f of x. So I'm going to do f inverse of, now what's f of x? That's the 2 thirds x plus 8. Oops, so now I need to plug in 2 thirds x plus 8 in for x in this f inverse function up here on the right. So I have 3 halves times x, and in this case I'm plugging in 2 thirds x plus 8, right? That's what's in the parentheses. Minus 12. And distribute. 3 halves times 2 thirds x is x. 3 halves times 8. 24 halves, which is 12, minus 12 also equals x. So in both cases, we verified that f and f inverse are indeed inverses of each other. So this is correct. That's the inverse function, and we verified it. Here's the next problem. So we begin by writing f as y equals 5 over x. And then for the inverse, we have to switch the x's and y's. And then we're going to solve for y. Now there's a couple ways of solving for y. One is thinking of this as x over 1, and you do the cross products. So x times y equals 5 times 1. And of course, that's the same thing as just multiplying both sides by y. Okay, And to finish, you have to divide both sides by x. Some of you might come up with another way of solving for y, but no matter how you do it, you should end up with 5 over x. So what happened here? We've got f of x is 5 over x, and now we've got f inverse of x is also 5 over x. So let's verify and see if, uh, if we take f inverse of f of x that we get x. All right, so let's do f of f inverse of x. So that means we're doing f of, now f inverse of x is 5 over x. And now we're going to put 5 over x in for x in the f function. f function is 5 over what's in the parentheses here, 5 over x which means 5 divided by 5 over x, which is 5 times x over 5. The 5's cancel, and we do get x. And of course, you're going to get exactly the same thing if you do f inverse of f of x, because you're going to just be plugging in the same thing you did here, right? You're going to be plugging in 5 over x, since that's what f of x is. And then you're going to plug in 5 over x into this function. It looks exactly the same. 5 over 5 divided by x, which is 5 divided by 5 over x, which is 5 times x over 5, which is x. So in either case, you can see that these are indeed inverses of each other. So this is the correct answer. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.